Welcome to Yoga with Bliss. You know, we were talking earlier about strengthening the core after something has happened in your life that disrupted your conditioning. Uh, that phrase, deconditioned. I like that phrase because right built into that phrase is the solution. I can do some conditioning. So let's use some yoga and some modifications and play with conditioning the core. I did have a little music for us. And I thank you for putting up with my uh, seeing in glasses on, glasses off situation. I am going to have us start Focus will calm down in a second once it knows where I'm really going to stand. I'm going to have us start standing. If you want, you can skip this part and start on the floor. Here we have a mountain. Little body acceptance. Some people, when they stand on a mountain, they put their legs right together. My knees tell me that is not a good thing for me, so I have my feet a little apart. What is right for you? Weight on the inside, ball of the foot outside, front of the foot back. Shoulder roll up, back and down. Feel your shoulder blades, they just came down your back and together. Your hands and your arms, palms are forward. And they're not out here. They're not back here. They're right here. If there was a stripe on the side of my body, when I roll my shoulders up, there's my arms right there with my midline laterally. How's your neck? I just relaxed mine. I'm going to do the tiniest little modified sun salutation A. I turn sideways because I'm going to use the back of a chair. You might be using the back of a couch, a kitchen counter. You might be using the seat of the chair or blocks, or the floor. Your body, your way, make a choice. Get what you need for yourself. There's your mountain. Best ever. As we salute, you choose what's the right position for your arms. Often, people will be out forward, but intend, I'll take this one away, intend for lined up. This arm is, a, I have a frozen shoulder. I don't talk about it that way. I say I have a thawing shoulder. So I'm intending it to be as near in line as it will go. I feel my lovely pelvic tilt, sternum lift, neck relaxed. Forward fold. What's the right forward fold today? Should I stop? Oh, I need to make my feet wider as I forward fold at one level or another level. Did you find your just right level? Now the forward fold continues all the way folded over. So you might be folded over wherever your body takes you. No judgment. Acceptance. Appreciation. Flat back is the next goal. Often they call it halfway up. I'm just going to say flat back, whatever that is for you. Exhale down. So if you're up here on the kitchen counter or a high block, flat back might be right there. Halfway and relax down. Flat back. That's our third one. Relax down. Hang here a moment with me. Wherever you are. Or hold here a moment with me. Wherever you are. You're melting into your best expression of the forward fold for you this day. What about an elbow hug? And just let your upper body rock. Relax the neck. Do you have one hand under this elbow? I'm going to switch it for the hand under this elbow. Breathing. After the forward fold, and we've rocked, comes 
your version of the down dog. I'm going to bend my knees and arise so that I can find about kitchen counter height. Here's my down dog. I let my butt sink back, unlock knees. My heels sink back, just a little weight on my hands. Breathing, find your down dog your way. After the down dog, I'm heading to a plank. I'm going to do a high plank here so I find the right distance. My pelvic tilt, my beautiful plank. Now, because of my rounded belly, it looks like I'm like I might be angling downward. No, look at my back. My back is fabulously flat. Let's head back to the plank. Excuse me, back to your down dog, your way, wherever it is for you. Are you breathing? I'm heading to a forward fold. How do you want to get there? I'm going to show you what I do. You do whatever you choose. One leg in the middle for a three-legged dog. I give a lift. Many people swoop this leg forward right to their hands. When I swoop my leg forward, it stops about halfway. I say, fine, what a nice opportunity for a little pyramid. And then I bring myself for my forward fold my way. But I want symmetry, so I'm heading right back to my down dog. Where is your down dog? Is it up higher? Find your down dog. The other leg is going to lift back for you wherever it lifts. I don't know. And it's going to swoop forward. Do you want to take a moment with your pyramid? Breathing. Before you bring yourself to your forward fold, your way. My head shaking, I'm just relaxing my neck. How's yours? Flat to back, up as much as you do when you keep your hip joint fully folded. Fold over, keep folded. Just lift that flat to back, round the back. One last time, flat to back, round the back. Breathing. Just hang here and prepare in your mind. Are you going to come up with a flat back or roll up one vertebrae at a time? I'll show roll up one vertebrae at a time first. Tuck your tailbone, unlock your knees, roll it up, roll it up. This used to be unavailable to me. And there you are. When you get to the top, did you notice that shoulder roll, pelvic tilt, sternum lift, chin tuck? Yeah, I say all that stuff to myself all the time. Let's do another forward fold. I need to step a little wider to make room for my softness. Another forward fold so that I can show you the flat back arise. If you have any issues with your low back, spinal stenosis, uh, ruptured discs, arthritis. Take a peek at this for getting up. Bend the legs a little more thoroughly. Take your arms to reiterate your flat back and arise with a flat back. Maybe more comfortable if you have any low back conditions. Oh, wasn't that a nice sun salutation? Just right for you. Repeat it if you want. Just rewind the video and do it again if you want but otherwise I'm gonna head to the ground and to do so I'll do a dog and a table on my way down I think I'll move my chair out of the way first there we are <sighs> where's your down dog is it on the kitchen counter it is it on the seat of the chair is it on a block is it on the mat when you step back, 
most many people are on their toes sink intend toward your heels towards the ground sink your chest elongate your spine press the knuckle of the pointer finger down eye of the elbow forward arms unlocked but elongated in that nice how about a table do you need extra padding as you lower with great care to your table well how about a cat cow we have to since we're here let's think of your wrists if your wrists bother you in a table you just take your wrists a little forward whether you are using a block or the mat wrist forward reduces the angle oh that was a table first and then i was doing a cat cow for my cat cow i do like my wrists under now the table is an arm balance feel that weight on your arms a few years ago it felt like nothing since I broke my arm and froze my shoulder, I can really feel the work my arms are doing. So I want spread fingers, press down knuckles, eye of elbow forward, arms unlocked but long. There's your table again. Let's go ahead and just sit yourself down. Now there's a wall behind me. I should have said, can you find a place with a wall? Because I'm going to do this staff. You know how we did all those forward folds? Walk your butt right up to the wall. A staff is really just a forward fold in a different position. So here I am with my flat back. For many people, that's it. This 90 degree angle is a full stretch. Enjoy if it is. Do you need a little pillow under your knees? Do your legs go down long? Your body your way round over what if that's it no judgment relax your hands and get grooving on wherever you round it to i can go farther but i really like the way it feels right here close your eyes don't uh even look where you're going certainly don't look where i'm going we're just sitting down we can't fall anywhere walk down i got a little wiggle as i walked down my feet are just the right distance, as close as possible with room for me to exist. And whenever you walk down, do you want to play lasso and get a ribbon around your feet and give a pull? Or does your body allow you to reach your feet and give a pull? One way is not better. Your body, your way. Forward fold. Mount yourself up. I'm going to turn diagonally so you can see my butterfly. Because my butterfly is going to turn into a boat. So here we have. I was all up tall on the wall, right? I have to move away from the wall so that I can round. See that rounded back? Keep your rounded back. And just let yourself come back with a rounded back, neutral neck, all relaxed. Did you feel your abs engage? I'm going to do it again. Here I'm rounded. My sternum is closer to my pubic bone. I come back. Nothing, nothing. Oh, right there. My abs engage. That's the right spot. Now I'm going to put my anchors down. Some people, when they do the boat, put their feet right together. Mine feel better a little apart. What do you want? Here is the breathing, pulsing boat. It's an abdominal wall and hip flexor workout. Take it back a half inch. Curl up a half inch. Come on back. Curl sternum to pubic bone. Yes, your hip flexors are helping too. Sternum to pubic bone. That's funny, I want to do this with my hands. It makes my abs work more. But sometimes I like them out, sternal to pubic bone. Oh, I can do it in my brain. There we are. Curl it. It's a pulsing boat. Now, if you come way far up, you've missed the work. So find it, engage, 
and pulse right back here. How long? How many? I don't know. Your body knows. Do as many pulsing boats as your body wants to do. You can hit pause on the video and do a whole bunch more. You might have stopped 10 pulses ago. Good for you. Know your body. Now, I'm going to come on up, put my feet together. Oh, look at those butterfly legs round over that butterfly. Here's another opportunity for self-acceptance. Did your elbows reach your knees? Are they nowhere near? All is good. Round over any way you want with your butterfly. One caveat. I gotta make sure you can see my feet. When you do your butterfly, do not pull on your feet and pull them up. That stretches ligaments in your ankle that are not good to stretch. Instead, if you want a little pull, grasp your ankles and pull yourself down. Oh, while we're here, I can't resist this one. Root your baby toes into the mat. Did you feel it? Now place your thumbs on the ball of your foot. With great care and gentleness, open the book. You don't want to pick those baby toes up. That's that ankle stretch we don't want. Open the book. Now be aware, this opening of the book can affect your knees. Make it feel good for you. Skip it if you do not like breathing. Here we are, back to our butterfly. I'm going to head back to the boat, so I have to get back at this angle away from the wall again. I, I was in my butterfly. See how I'm rounded? When I round myself back, now my head is neutral. Let me show you something. If you were to do your butterfly all up straight like this, nice tall back, and then go back, you would have all this tension in your neck. We don't want that. So we have a relaxed butterfly, and then we roll back into a relaxed upper body, relaxed neck, and then we lean back enough till you feel your abs engage. Did you set your anchors down in your boat? Now, you may just stay right here and breathe and be. You may pick up one foot. Oh, do you want to hold on? And breathe and be. I'm going to try the other foot holding on. Whenever your body says, you go back to a butterfly. If you want, you can keep playing. I'm holding on. I'm rounded. Neutral neck. Do I like those pointed feet? I'm going to try flexed and see how that is. Do I want one foot bent and try one out? Oh, I don't know. It's okay. Do I want the other one out? I can do the other both out holding on. When I let go, my boat tends to sink. Please set your anchors. Choose your boat. Use this time to do what's right for you. And when you're ready, Let's head back to the butterfly. The butterfly is just landing on the edge of the boat. He, she helps us out. Relax. Breathing. They help us out. Next to the boat is going to rock or revolve. So I have, I'm rounded. I stay rounded. I come back. I set my anchors neutral neck. Leave your anchors for this one. Find your hands out. Beautiful. Now I'm going to reach one side forward. See how that shoulder came forward? The other side forward. See how that shoulder came forward? And here's the pattern. Relax neck. One side forward. Back to neutral. Feel and adjust how much work you want. Other side forward. Back to neutral, adjust, let's add a breath, exhale, exhale, now how many of these revolved or rocking boats is right for you, your body knows I don't, so you're going to listen to your body, exhale your best full expression, of the one hand reaches 
The other shoulder goes back when the one comes forward. Do you feel your hip flexors, your abdominal wall? We're working obliques and transverse. Are you breathing? You came up whenever was the right time for you. Maybe you're staying back longer than I. Maybe you came up a while ago, butterfly. Now we have been working the core, rectus, abdominis, obliques, transverse, but we have also been working the hip flexors, the psoas. When you butterfly, your psoas is not stretching, but it's relaxing like a rubber band that collapses. It is part of a relaxed state. Let's come on up. All right, one last ab piece core piece with hip flexors if you would like remember you just turn this off anytime you want you do pieces of it you do the whole thing you choose your body your practice your way i'm rolling myself down everybody gets down their own way i'm apple shaped so i cannot slowly lower lower as my legs pop up in the air and my back doesn't like it so lower with a little assist. However you lower, appreciate it. Pelvic tilt and release. I'm doing a pelvic tilt with my foot assist and release. Now, if I have my feet barely touching the ground and engage the pelvic tilt, I can feel my abdominal wall is engaged. So it's up to you whether you want to leave a flat foot or just a toe when you have the pelvic tilt breathing. I'm going to lift one leg. And you'll notice I lift out to the side first and then up because I'm leaving room for my great belly. If you don't have a great belly, you may just lift up. Oops, I couldn't do it. I can do it. Just lift up. But you see, I can't hug my leg if I just lift up. So I accommodate, please accommodate yourself. How about the other side? Does this feel okay? See how I'm rocking? I call this a rock and roll. Here's the, oh, I guess I'm rolling side to side. Now I'm gonna rock. I'm pulling with my hands, rocking my pelvis. If you can hug your knees, rock and roll. If you cannot hug your knees, rock your pelvis and with windshield wipers roll your pelvis did you pick what was right for you did you relax your back all right now we're going to engage the pelvic tilt did you choose your feet assist or barely touch now i'm going to pick my head up just to, just till it clears the floor that added a whole bunch of work for my abdominal wall to stay curled. You may want to lay your head right back down. You might love the way it feels picked up. I'm going to try curled up. Are you breathing? Each person their way. Now, let's do toe dippers first. I've curled and keeping my pelvic tilt, I dip one toe in the water and then the other. The curl is using my core. The dip is adding a little extra weight to the core work in the same way picking up my head adds a little extra weight. And the hip flexors become involved. Now let's try something else. What if you wanted to do a less bent leg? You want to flex or point it? I guess I'll point. Here's a longer toe dipper. I dipped out a little ways. I have kept my pelvic tilt. You might be done now. Listen to your body. Stop when your body tells you to. This is a core abdominal wall and hip flexor workout, but you are meant to adjust it to suit yourself. Do you want to sit your head down about now? Do you want to leave it up? Now let's think about we did dippers, we did long dippers. Here is a long leg. Oh, let it be bent. It'll feel more comfortable. Pelvic tilt. See how it feels 
for one heel to lower a little and the other. Now you may decide, I wanna really focus on my pelvic tilt. So I'm setting my head down and grounding my hands to really focus on my pelvic tilt. Please stop when your body tells you to. I'm going to continue in case as you become conditioned, you're ready to do more. You gradually lower your leg to whatever place is right for you to choose. Keep your pelvic tilt to protect your low back. And then weeks, maybe months from now, when you have gradually built up your conditioning, you may try the double long leg. I'll show it to you. Long leg unlocked. How does it feel that far? Your pelvic tilt, keep it tilt. How does that feel? Oh, that's enough. I'm coming back. So the double leg may only go down. That's enough. I'm coming back. A tiny little bit. Oh, it's fabulous. You're working up to it. Remember, over time, you may be able to take pelvic tilt remains, your long leg, and then curl up. Keep that pelvic tilt. Long leg, one leg or two. What's your body say? You have been using this time to play with your body your way. And when you were fatigued from working on your core, you just did some pelvic tilts and rock and roll your core. And so each person has made just the right use of their time. Let's all enjoy a little roll and a little rock. Now, I don't know about you, and I'm hoping you have selected just the right amount of work. My hip flexors are exhausted. Let me show you one of the best stretches for the hip flexor. I want you to think about doing this at night when you're in bed, when you take a nap. We start on our sides in the neutral position. I'm actually putting myself a little on an angle so you can see behind me. Hips are stacked, shoulders are stacked. I just let one arm anchor to keep my shoulders stacked. Relax it if you want. Take this leg down long. Now this is a subtle stretch up under your hip bone. This is your iliacus, uh, iliac crest and your iliacus muscle is up underneath. When this foot falls down to the ground, your iliacus is stretching. So we're just gonna hang here for a minute. And I do find myself doing a teeny tiny nano roll forward and back till I find just the right space where my foot, uh, I have to really think for my foot to reach the ground. Now I know many of the people who practice with me, their foot goes right down. Good, enjoy your flexibility. Now see that long leg of the top leg? It's long and unlocked. I'm just gonna let the side of my foot swoop behind me. And I'm gonna hang here for a minute. You keep your hand all relaxed out front. And just breathe with me. I have to use my hand to talk a little. Right here in the groin, your psoas attaches to the top of your thigh, comes up through your back and attaches to the small of your back. Breathing. And we're stretching the psoas right now, but look. We're also stretching the rectus abdominis. And because this hip is back a little and this shoulder is still stacked, we're stretching some of the muscles on the side of the body. Breathe and be with it. So think about that back leg. In your mind's eye, feel that knee behind you. Keep it behind you and bend the leg and feel the quadriceps stretch. If your leg is back here and you accidentally go like this, you missed everything. You just erased your psoas stretch, your quad stretch. 
So you have to have the leg back and then give it a bend. And this hip, as that hip presses forward, the quadriceps stretch. Now everybody's different. There was a time when I would pull my foot all the way up and touch my tush. I can feel that my knee that is a waiting replacement doesn't even like me to bend hardly at all. Ouch. So I'm, I think I'm going to stop doing that. <laughs> but you keep going. Body acceptance. You do what you can. You accept what you can't. And then you intend to do a little better. Breathing. And when the time is right, you melt yourself with care back to your neutral position. And I'm going to roll over, not gracefully, not carefully. I'm just going to roll over and do the other side. Okay, I am doing it carefully, but it ain't graceful. When you find yourself onto the other side, neutral position, stack your hips, stack your shoulders, reach your arm out, breathing. Curl up those legs, both of them at first. Then let one leg come down long, lower that leg, and there it is. There's your iliacus stretch. I found out about the iliacus when I had a, a terrible backache. And it turned out it was because I had very, very tight and inflamed iliacus muscles up under my hip bones. So far, this is the only way I've ever known to stretch them in all the research I've done for a decade. If you know one, please text me and tell me about it. Now you are up under your hip bone released. Now think about your long leg. It's unlocked. It's going to swoop back while your arm swoops forward. You want to pull on your arm. Reach back your leg. Listen to your body. Breathe and just be with it. If one side has more tension than the other side, breathe into it and hold that one side longer. Your hip flexor so as is stretching. Actually, the iliacus and so as come together at the bottom for the iliopsoas, and that's stretching too. Oh. Now keep your knee back and see, does your body allow you to bend that leg? Drop your knee down. It might want to pop up in the air. That would be your gluteus medius tightening slowly with care. Drop it down, press it back, bend it up as much or little as you want. Oh. Well, your psoas said thank you ever so much. And now we're just going to release onto the javasana of your choice. Do you want to roll on your belly and do a prone javasana with your arms relaxed where you choose? Maybe up here, maybe a little pillow on your forehead so you can breathe, arrange the girls. If you're on your belly, on your front, do you want traditional javasana on your back? You know, I do like to engage a pelvic tilt. The doctors actually say I'm not supposed to be able to do any of these things I'm doing. I have ruptured discs, spinal stenosis, and arthritis right in my low back. Laying flat is supposed to be unavailable to me. And it was for years, but gradually I do what I can and accept it. And then I intend just a little further. With care, gratitude, relaxation. And over months, maybe over seasons, the older we are, the longer it takes. 
It's astonishing what your body will give you. Do you want to close your lips? Lulu Jai breath, feel your abdomen rise and fall for diaphragmatic breathing. Now, I have to tell you about anxiety. Well, it's how to reduce anxiety. The slower you breathe, the more it affects your central nervous system and reduces the anxious state. So just inhale long, long inhale. Exhale, whatever is your natural, long, long. Exhale. That's your most comfortable slow breathing. Let's focus on your diaphragm, your slow breaths. What happens is the body reduces the amount of cortisol. The body reduces the amount of adrenaline. The heart rate slows, the blood pressure lessens. So at the end of every practice, this is being and breathing to reduce anxiety, to find your inner most peaceful self that you can have at any moment. You can do this at the end of the practice. You can do this at stressful times in your life. You can do this going to bed. Please enjoy your slow breathing as long as you choose. When you are ready, I close every practice with a little ritual, I guess. I put either my mental awareness or my outreached up arms or both toward my body and I say thank you to my body for all it does for me it is the place I live then I place my hands over my heart center if you are prone and on your belly place your hands above your head and see if one hand will hug the other and say thank you to whoever, whatever it is that you believe in. And then, if you're on your back, upstretch your arms in any way that is comfortable for you. For me, with my thawing shoulders, I need a tall block so I can upstretch my arms. My shoulder blades just walk down. I'll stretch my arms over my head where it's comfortable. If you're on your belly, you might outstretch your arms like Superman or fold them right up next to your head. And here we are. The arms up is the prelude to a mental thank you to yourself for giving yourself this wonderful self-care. Now, what's available to you? Can you pat yourself on the back or the shoulders or the chest or the head? Breathing. Pat yourself and say thank you to yourself for your self-care. By the way, often at this moment, I just well up with tearfulness. Breathe and be. Let your emotions go where they can, where they do, where they may. And now make a yogi's choice. 
We shall rise from this position. Do you want to just come up in whatever way you have learned is best from you right off your back? When I do, I, I use my elbow. Actually, I can show you part of it. I'm rolling onto my belly because I'm going to come up from my belly. But I use my body as leverage to help roll me up onto my elbow. And then I might sit up. But today I want to show you rolling over onto my belly. Those of you who were in a prone javasana, I'm joining you. Those of you who just want to see, this is how someone with great back pain might get up. Pelvic tilt. Did you feel yourself press your pubic bone to the mat? Keep that pelvic tilt. Can you feel that is your core, your abdominal wall that will maintain your pelvic tilt? I've snuggled my arms right in so that my knees are in contact with the mat, my elbows are in contact, I have my pelvic tilt. When I arise, look at that flat back. I'm coming up with a protected flat back. Breathing, I can't resist a cat cow. I'm eventually coming over oh, to the seated position. To close our practice with the seat of your choice. Do you like a wall? When you walk your dimples, your tush, right up to the wall, you can then roll your shoulder blades in your head. I'm very flexible forward, but just sitting here is stretching so many things and feels. Excuse my hiccups, so good. I'm going to try the easy seat but i've used the wall to assist my body in having a straight back when i look out in the practice in most classes i attend at least a third of the class has a rounded back sitting out in the middle of the room there's an easy seat that's actually a little easier do you want butterfly do you want wide leg did you give yourself what you choose even if you can sit all the way up with your beautiful straight back as i can right here it's all the way up but the wall gives me a more relaxing close to my practice i even let my feet relax sometimes i flex them sometimes i point them melt them melt your neck as you outstretch and pull your arms over heart center. Do you like prayer hands? Do you like self-care hands? Choose what's right for you. And know that the light in me sees and honors the light in you. Thank you so much for inspiring this little core abdominal wall workout. You know I'm gonna play this for me to do my work because I only work when you guys are here or when I'm working online with another instructor who might be me. Breathe again and center. Namaste. How far over do you lean? It doesn't matter. Just round that spine. Be with yourself. Do you want to hold on and round? Do you want to hold on and round? Do you like to hang and round? Your round body your way. The practice is over. I just couldn't resist one more moment of body acceptance for however much you round when you get up. You don't have to be getting up. I just have to get up because I have to make my way over to turn the recording off. Oh, there we are. <laughs> thank, Really, thank you for practicing with me. Bye.